Before I decided to record this video, I hadn't figured out exactly how tricky it is to say quantitative easing and quantitative tightening many times fast. So I'm just going to say it once and that one counted as uh, first and last time and from now on I will refer to them as QE and QT. So what do these acronyms stand for? They basically are two different monetary policies that central banks can implement. The first one, QE, involves buying illiquid assets in the open market. These assets are usually corporate bonds or government bonds but in some circumstances this could be stocks and shares as well. Famously the Bank of Japan had a program of extremely loose monetary policy back in 2016 by which it bought 6 trillion yen per year of equity ETFs. For context, six trillion yen is the equivalent of 55 billion dollars. The objective of this policy is to replace illiquid assets in the market such as bonds because if you think about it we cannot use government bonds to buy products and services and replace them with the most liquid asset there is which is cash. This can also be done via auctions with corporate banks and financial intermediaries in the hope that they will use this extra liquidity to give out more loans and mortgages and in this way stimulate spending, stimulate economic activity and so on. So with QE, central banks want to increase the money supply and this is done when an economy runs cold, meaning that it's not growing or is growing below potential and inflation is also very low. Central banks do want to keep some level of inflation, usually around 2%, but they want this to be stable over time. The reason why a little bit of inflation is a good thing is that if we don't have any inflation or any inflation expectations we as a population stop spending because we're hoping to get a better deal in the near future and this is especially true for big transactions such as buying a car uh, buying a house etc and central banks don't want this to keep the economy going um, to keep the economy growing we have to be able to keep spending a little bit and so be in a situation where demand is always a tiny bit ahead of supply. In jargon, QE is also referred to as loose monetary policy. And when a central bank signals that they want to keep their policy loose, we say that they are dovish. QT is, of course, the opposite. Here, the central bank is selling assets into the economy. So it's withdrawing cash and replacing it with bonds with the objective of reducing the amount of money supply circulating around. This policy is implemented when economies overheat. So when growth is strong, unemployment is low and inflation is ahead of target. Today we have the perfect example of a clear policy shift from easing to tightening and this was mostly due to inflation overshooting, so inflation being higher than expectations. The Fed initially believed that inflation was transitory, like many people, me included, but now we have the perfect storm of supply constraints on one side due to Covid and due to the war as well, and on the other side increased consumer spending because of lower unemployment, higher wages and the reopening of economies globally. In jargon, QT is also referred to as tight monetary policy and when a central bank starts implementing this policy we say that they have become hawkish. So that was everything for today, I thank you so much for watching this far, hope this was useful and I'll catch you very soon.